Assalamu alaikum and hi everyone. Uh, today, me and my group mate will be presenting about Sustainable Development Goal 6 or SDG 6, uh, which is about uh, clean water and sanitation. Before we start the presentation, uh, allow me to introduce my group members for this presentation. As you can see in this slide, the, there are four people in this group, which is the first one is Muhammad Faiz as a group leader. The second one is Nur Shahira. The third one is me, Nur Fatin Hanif Binti Muhammad Zabri with metric number 271833. And the last person is Muhammad Faris. Okay, now let me uh, share some info about the outlines for the presentation today so that it will be easier for you guys to understand more uh, when we are presenting our uh, slide. In this presentation, uh, I will be presenting about the what is uh, Sustainable Development uh, Goal 6 or SDG 6. Um, Next, what is the goals for SDG 6 and the last one I will present about the background of the country that we have choose which is uh, we think it was linked to the SDG 6 uh, and the country is um, Jordan so at the end of my presentation I will uh, present about the background of the Jordan the second presenter is Muhammad Faris and in his presentation, he will uh, present about the tourism in Jordan and the support from their government to achieve SDG 6. The third presenter is Noor Shahira and in her part, she will be presenting about the relationship between SDG 6 and the tourism industry and also about SDG 6 and the tourism planning in Jordan. And the last one is uh, our group leader, which is uh, Faiz Wahyudin. And in his part, uh, he will be presenting about the difference between Jordan and Finland in achieving SDG 6. And lastly, he will do the conclusion for today's presentation. Okay, now let's continue with my part for this presentation. Um, do you know what is SDG 6? SDG 6 stands for uh, Sustainable Development Goals 6 and it is uh, contained about uh, clean water and sanitation. For your information, SDG 6 uh, calls for ensuring universal access to safe and affordable uh, drinking water, sanitation and hygiene and ending open uh, defecation. Now, let's talk about the aim. Do you know what is the aim of SDG 6? The aim is to improve water quality and uh, water use efficiency uh, and to encourage sustainable extraction and supply of uh, fresh water. What are the goals here? The goals is to ensure access to safe water resource and sanitation for all. For your information, around 1.8 billion people globally use a source of drinking water that that is fecally contaminated. Some 2.4 billion people lack access to basic sanitation services such as toilet uh, or latrines. Water scarcity affects more than 40% of the global population and is projected to rise. More than 80% of wastewater resulting from human activities in discharge into river or sea without any treatment and had 
uh, leading to pollution. Do you know why? Why does clean water is important? First, because access uh, to water, sanitation, and hygiene is a human right. Yet, billions are still faced with, with daily challenges assessing even the most basic of the services. As we know, water is an extremely important part of our life. It is used for irrigation, cooking, washing, cleaning, drinking, and many more. Water is essential for maintaining good health uh, as it helps in regulating body temperature, carries out, uh, carry out uh, normal functioning, its indigestion, and remove toxin from the body. Next, uh, the industrial sector generally use large amount of water for handling their processes, from cleaning duties to transporting goods. Unlike our home, uh, unlike our home tap water, the industrial sector's water sources will vary will vary in different forms amount and gradients now let me explain what are the effect water and sanitation related disease remain among the major causes of death in children under five which is more than 800 children die every day from diarrhea disease linked to poor hygiene. If we don't take action to solve the water and sanitation problem, it will affect uh, many factors such as health, uh, education, access to food and local economy goods. Okay, now let me share some information about Jordan's background. Jordan is an Arab Muslim uh, country that located in the north of the Arabian Peninsula and in West Asia. For your information, Jordan is named to the Jordan River, uh, which passes on its western border and uh, Amman is the capital. The official language in Jordan is Arabic and English is the first uh, foreign language in that country. Jordan is a country of hikers and historians, scientists and artists, foodies and yoga friends. This was the reason why Jordan can be one of the tourism destinations. Tourism in Jordan also offer variety of sightseeing and enter entertainment options. Lastly, this country is home to very friendly and hospitable people who warmly welcome tourists. Uh, that's all from me. Uh, thank you for lending me your ears and time. Uh, now I will pass my uh, I will pass the presentation to the next presenter to share more about the tourism in Jordan and the support from Jordan government to achieve SDG six. Thank you. And good morning to everyone, include teacher, uh, include the daughter and my classmate. Okay, today I would like to ask. Uh, before I start, I will introduce my name first. My name is Mo Faris bin Mahamali, and my name is two two seven one eight four five. Okay, alright. Okay, for uh, for this for this presentation, I will, I will present about the tourism in Jordan. In tourism, there are many facts about Jordan history and also and culture. Uh, Jordan is known by its home for more than 1,000 uh, archaeological and religious sites. 
this include history uh, from the ethnic roots of Petra that located at what a Wajuram and the ancient of the of the Roman wonder of Chiraj that has been uh, listed by UNESCO as a uh, as a, a natural area area. Okay, Jordan also been known been known as a uh, the valley of the the valley of of the moon, and is uh, is include uh, is uh, this uh, Jordan also known as a dreaming treasure. Okay, the most the uh, the next one is uh the famous one is Dead Sea, which is the uh. They see actually at the about the at the cent lower center of the earth, which is at 420 meters below sea level. The Dead Sea uh, here's the lower of point of the of the earth, but that's not magical. The most magical is Dead Sea, not as a the shortest the shortest uh the shortest seas ever are uh, ten times more shortest than other ocean. So in the in the uh, I will explain more later. <laughs> okay. We go to the next slide, uh, which is uh, continue from the first slide just now. Okay. Uh, the next is about. Okay, the Jordan is also famous with the ancient wonder, which is have the place is so much cinematography. Until the most famous director films are come to Jordan to to film filming the the film, they have a lot of famous films that have been filmed have been filmed at the Jordan such as, uh, such as Indiana Jones, and Transformers and and also Aladdin. Okay. Okay, the best place for you to go if you come to the Jordan is a first is Petra, because Petra is famous with archaeological sites in Jordan. Uh, if you go to Petra, you cannot finish the tour in one day. You need to come several days to finish the tours at the Petra because it's so big, it's so big, and it's the capital of the Nabati Kingdom, accessible via a narrow canyon called Asdi Asi. It contains a tomb, uh, a contain a tombs, and temples, temples carved into pink stone cliff. That's why he been nicknamed as a, as a pink, as a rose city. Sorry, not pink, rose city. The name, the the, the place they always they always say we are after this. If Muslim, every everyone Muslim must know this this place. What's the name of this place? Yes. Dead Sea. Uh, Dead Sea. Known by the other name is Salty Lake, bordered by Jordan to the east and Israel, and the west to uh, to activity for activity that you can do at the Dead Sea is you can get experience. You can feel experience to swim to swim at the Dead Sea. I'm sure for those who cannot swim, you can swim there too because you will not drowning. Drowning, you we if you cannot swim, you can because there are a lot of salt salt in the in the in the Dead Sea until you he can float off yours, he can float you. So you will you know you have to don't have to worry about drowning, drowning, you will float. <laughs> there are a lot of people have tried this. If you have chance to go to Jordan, you should do. For the next slide, which is uh, government support to achieve the SDG six at Jordan. Uh, the new sustainable, sustainable development goals uh, SDG six: uh, clean water and sanitation, monitoring and reporting framework with. Uh, from this from this slide, uh, I will read first. Monetary and reporting framework will support the government of Jordan to manage water security. 
it will strain the strain the it will strain the, the monitoring and reporting and capabilities of the ministry and its partner and will foster cross -sectory, sectoral collaboration between government in in titles that's mean uh, UNICEF are, are willing to help uh, Governor Jordan to achieve the to do uh, to create a framework for Jordan to make sure the issue this the issue that happened to Jordan right now will be set will be reduced will be settled will be, uh, yes we will, will be settled as uh, half of the world population could be living in areas facing water scarcity by us as early as a 2025 and in Jordan dwindling water supplies and a growing population will we will have per capita water used by the end of the this century this mean uh, the population are more growing is more there is more hard for for Jordan to achieve the SD, this SDG which is water and sanitation for to achieve the goal so a plan will be implemented to reduce the amount of water pump to the to the to the household so he want to match he want to reduce the the water pump to the household so from this he, he want to he want them he want make, he want them to reduce of using of water so it can keep long lasting for them to use for them for uh, to face to face uh, other the other uh bad will happen to the to this country it will have a a supplier of water next is a uh, water be water be what water will be ration with each house getting it once or twice a week for for three to five hours at a time that's this mean water uh, they can the water can be go to the can be ration to each house the water can be pumped to the each each house to wash a week that's mean he can use water twice only two times that he that the house the owner of household can use water so they need to make they need to to use properly of water next step is uh, is about uh, water solar sweat project in agreement so uh, the government have made agreement with the country the US and the UAE country uh, so with this agreement Jordan will receive uh, 200 million cubic meter per meter of water a year of this the uh, water from Israel they roughly 20% of what the Jordanian government uh, supplies its citizen and resident with the with today so uh, so after the agreement uh, the Jordan uh, in the return of back from agreement Jordan will allow the UAE uh, to build a so solar at the Jordan next is uh, the government also signed agreement with Turkish company named uh, Gamma Las Gamma Las Sama Tumpang Water from the Southern Aquifer of DZ at the cost of 600 million dollar the project which is expected to be ready by 2020 that means it's already done 
uh, this uh, the the pemwater from the southern aquifer of the sea uh, is about aquifer from the dead food they will pump from the dead sea water to the household and more the government has invited five consortiums to bid to build to build a plant at Akaba capable of handling 500 million uh, cubic meter a year the winner will be consult to pipeline linking to the, the plan to Aman and the other three areas that means the government have invited five consortium to bid not to not to to bid to build a plan so uh, we uh, Jordan will get 300 million cubic meter a year the winner of the bid will get we construct a park line linking the plan of Amman and other areas so if the winner winner they will construct the park line do a uh, like a uh, do a park line and the project okay now for the next set is water sanitation how Jordan overcome this issue so uh, Jordan have the government of Jordan has set out a policy government for the provision of this decentralized waste water management the purpose of this decentralized waste water management system in Jordan are protect to protection of groundwater from pollution with untreated waste water provision of cost provision of cost pro provision of cost efficient waste water management uh, option next to provision of locally available alternative water resources for safe resource for safe use from this mean that the provision of cost efficient waste water management option is more is uh this uh this this plan is more reduced using money from other projects Provision or locally available alternative water resource to save uh, from the from the decentralized waste water. We uh, we make sure the uh, the water will save to you to reuse. So everyone everyone in general will get uh, a good uh, a good water. Okay, for the next slide is uh solid waste waste solid waste. And before I explain about what solid is, what ha happened to the Jordan about about solid waste? Okay, first, uh, the growing industrialization and high population growth rate, uh, population growth rate has led to a rapid increase. Lead to the rap, uh, has lead to the rapid increase in solid waste generation in in country which has a turn to put increasing pressure in waste management in, in infrastructure around two million tons of money money simple waste in is generated in Jordan. Each year, waste most of is diverted to unsanitary landfill and dump sit dump sites. Improper solid waste disposal is, is leading to public health risk, uh, adverse environmental impact as well as social economic problem. Okay, from the slide you can you can read uh, after uh, I will explain body. Okay, that's mean. Uh, Jordan uh, take a refugee too much until the pressure more grower than than the more grower. So waste uh, the solid waste are uh, more use more uh, have a more so uh, the more pressure have more uh, many population. That means many people will will uh, waste uh, will solid will use uh, will with the solid 
we throw everything so they have connection with water so if if uh if solid as you know we go to the we some of them we throw it at the at the sea or at the water at, at the water place and uh, and more it might will make dangerous of water to the Jordan it's more waste so uh, German have already 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 plan to what to do with the with the solid management so so see you at next slide as see you at next slide okay just now i already i already i already i already, I already, I already explained about how sol, how solid waste happen in jordan so the jordan government have made a Men um, need to manage the situation. So, how government manage the sanitation of the solid water, solid waste management? First, uh, they will build a recycle landfill project. The government of Jordan, in collaboration with the UNDP, GEF, and the Danish government, establish YMW. Biomaintenance planet plan at the Ral Usafe landfill near Amman. This project consists a system to have a landfill uh, gas wells and an anaerobic digestion plant based on 16 tons per, tons per day of organic waste from hotel, restaurant, and shelter house in Amman. Okay, this means. Uh, from uh, from this project, uh, Rusafe landfill, they will open a site for them to 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 uh, to recycle of the waste solid or the solid waste. So it's more good for them to reuse what what they they to reuse uh, the reuse uh, of the solid waste. Okay, for the for the next uh, plan is a. Uh, is to is Al Gabawi landfill project. The first of of its kind in Jordan as is designed and constructed with gas collection system with financial assistance from the World Bank. The electricity generated from landfill gas will be delivered to national grid. This facing electricity produced by grid connected power plants that traditionally use a heavy fuel oil. Okay, that's all for me. Thank you. Hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Nushaira Binta Azhar and I will explain to you guys about the relationship between SDG 6 and the tourism industry. So, for your information, the water scarcity has affected more than 14% of the world and is projected to be increased uh, with the global uh, temperature rising due to the climate change and um, increasing the trough and desertifications. So by 2050, it is projected that at least one out of four people will be affected by this recurring water shortage. Next, the lack of uh, clean water for drinking and sanitation. This will encourage disease, killing millions with preventable, contaminated water with induced diarrhea and dehydration, or um, inhibiting work and study resulting in the loss of millions of days working for livelihoods and education, creating a vicious uh, circle of difficult to break the poverty. So, the tourism investment requirement for providing utilities can play a critical role in achieving water access and security as well as hygiene and sanitation for all. The efficient use of water in tourism pollution control and technology efficiency can be a key for safeguarding our um, most precious uh, resources such as the water. Next is the tourism infrastructure. In the Pacific, particularly in rural or remote uh, villages, this has benefit many uh, uh, communities with access to water and sanitation. The key to a thriving tourism industry access to Pacific also relies heavily and, uh, on access to a safe drinking water and hygiene. However, water is a precious 
uh, resources across the Pacific. So we need to take a good care of these resources. In addition, rainfall uh, patterns are predicted to change, uh, potentially impacting water resources. So it is therefore more important than ever that the uh, Pacific uh, tourism sector needs to engage in proactive water management. So in 2017, as the uh, United Nations International of Sustainable Tourism for Development is a good opportunity for this tourism, uh, for this specific tourism sector to um, set up uh, their efforts in uh, adopting sustainable practice to manage water usage by investing in efficient uh, technology, effectively managing wastewater, and taking a preventative measure to control marine pollution. Next, strengthening relevant policies and toughening enforcement and monitoring is essential for sustainable economic growth from tourism, but also ensuring that it contributes to ensuring the availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. So overall, I can say that the uh, water, uh, clean water and sanitation can influence the tourism industry. Next, SDG 6 and tourism planning in Jordan. One of the most important uh, sectors in Jordanian economy is tourism. For this purpose, the Water and Irrigation Ministry prioritized buildings connected to the tourist industry when allocating water resources second only to the basic provision of drinking water for the population. However, the water supply is a growing issue for the tourism industry in Jordan. A planned water connection project is aimed to help, but more needed in a long term. So, as a country with a limited water resources, the management and allocation of Jordan's water reserves is far from straightforward. This is because the country has a large water supply deficit which currently stands at 400 million cubic uh, meters a year. So the Ministry of Water and Irrigation is working to ensure that the key sectors to the country's economy are not held back by the inadequate access to water supply. So since 2017, the Jordan has made establishment of green growth a top national priority. The Green Growth National Action Plan from 2021 until 2025 was created to expand on Jordan's uh, climate and sustainable development ambitions by mainstreaming green growth, uh, climate change and sustainable development objectives into sectoral strategic uh, frameworks. So the sector level action plans were developed for each of the priority green economy sector, for example, the agriculture. And then the energy, tourism, transport, waste and water. So for your information, what is the green growth? So the green growth is a new strategic approach for the government of Jordan that integrates principles of inclusive, sustainable economic growth into the existing national context and priorities. Implementing this green growth approach will allow Jordan to achieve its socio-economic development targets while stimulously addressing environmental risks and climate change. So now, does anyone of you know what is this figure tell about? Hmm. Alright, let me tell you. This figure is telling you the relationship between five national uh, green growth objectives with SDG. As you know, we have 17 SDG and this figure will show you the uh, relationship between all SDG and five uh, national green growth objectives. So, uh, number one is sustainable green growth and then enhance national capital and then climate change adaptation and mitigation. Next is resources efficiency and social development and uh, poverty reduction. However, I will only focus on the SDG that we will uh, discuss, which is SDG 6. So, the um, relationship that uh, related to our topic is Objective 2, which is the Enhanced Natural Capital. Alright now, 
So Jordan's first uh, national green growth objective is to enhance the country's natural capital. So for that purpose, it aims to improve the quality and quantity of natural resources used to generate economic uh, growth and provide ecosystem services that support economic activities. So natural resources are an important contributor to the tourism sector. Why? Because they provide the necessary inputs to the tourism and hospitality sector as well as being a source of tourism interest by themselves. For example, what? What is the example? Nature-based tourism that includes a wide range of variety such as adventure tourism and eco-tourism. Both tourism, eco-tourism and adventure tourism rely on nature as the main source as their profit. All right? So, the uh, tourism sector activities have a variety of implications on the quantity and quality of natural capital in different ways. If you use it, it already has the, um, uh, the implications. All right? So in the case, for example, in the case of marine environment, tourism activities can have negative impact. What is that? The negative impacts. For example, the degradation of coral reefs that caused during diving. Next, the infrastructure visual impact on coastlines or the pollution caused by diver boats, boats, sorry, boats and other maritime vehicles. And at the same time, construction of tourism facilities within or close to key biodiversity area can also produce negative impact on the wildlife. Okay, next is the hospitality industry. So tell me, what is the hospitality industry that you know? Uh, hotels, next, restaurant, or, or other uh, establishment that the tourists may visit when uh, staying in a foreign destination that usually associate with consumption behavior, which are different from the habits uh, exhibited by people living in the country that usually generating high volumes of solid and liquid waste per capita. Alright, so the increment of littering, a lot of which is waste plastic and non-biodegradable packaging, organic waste from tourists include what? For example, food and human waste, and large volumes of wastewater can have detrimental effects on the environment and on sanitation infrastructure and services. This means that if we don't take a good care of, of this, they will have uh, an uh, and detri uh, detrimental effect for the environment. Okay? And then at the same time, the hospitality industry can minimize its impact on the environment. How? By investing in water and energy uh, efficiency measure and reducing waste generation. For example, food and other consumables which has shown to decrease costs in the long run as well as increasing customer satisfaction, resulting in an increase in profits. It means that if the hospitality industry uh, minimizes these impacts, it's not only we can reduce the impacts, but they can also uh, increase their customer satisfaction as well as increase their profits. Right. And then ecotourism is considered to have a net positive effect on natural capital by increasing awareness of locals and tourists about the importance of the natural environment. This means that by uh, doing an ecotourism activities, we can um, we can increase the awareness of locals and uh, tourists about the environment. Okay, so ensuring that natural resources are protected and enhanced brings out an increment on the attractiveness of the ecotourism experience. In this regard, ecotourism is a critical, high-value added sector to address many of the environmental associated risks mentioned above. Alright, so next, this is the tourism sector green growth objective as what you can see in the slides. So as what I said earlier, I only focus on the enhanced natural capital objective. So this is what is their objective. There are four. Number one is to increase public awareness about the value of natural resources and the environment through tourism sector activities. 
maybe they can do uh, ecotourism activities right and then number two is strengthen availability of uh, of data around environmental issues and mainstream the environment into the tourism sector's development planning and management number three to reduce the negative impact of the tourism sector on the natural environment including biodiversity and at natural heritage sites and lastly to improve the quantity and quality of nature-based tourism product and service so uh, that's all from me thank you i pass to the next presenter thank you shahira now i will present about the differences between jordan and finland in achieving sdg6 water I've clean water and sanitation. Before that, let me introduce myself. My name is Faiz Walidin bin Muhammad Awanghaw and I will be the last presenter for this presentation. Now, let us proceed with the topic which is the differences between Jordan which is our chosen country from the Middle East with another country which is nearly achieving SDG 6 clean water and sanitation which is known as Finland. Before that, do you guys know which part of the world does Finland located? The answer will be the Europe region, or to be more specific, Finland is located in Western Europe. Next, do you guys know that Finland has been named as the world happiest country? I'm sure that some of you guys may know about this fact, and based on our sources, Finland has been named as the world happiest country for the fifth year in a row by United Nations since 2018 until 2022. Once again, five years in a row. So if you want to be happy for your entire life, please make sure to apply your citizen, uh, citizenship in Finland and your life will be guaranteed to be happy unlike in Malaysia where you need to face a lot of hardship to have a good living environment. You can try if you want. And uh, that's all about introduction of uh, Finland. And without further ado, let us proceed to the main topic, which is the differences between Jordan and Finland in achieving SDG 6. Before I present the outline of the main factor that differentiate Jordan and Finland, I would like to inform you that Jordan is a developing country while Finland is a developed country. From here, we can already realize that Finland definitely will exceed the ability of Jordan in achieving SDG 6, clean water and sanitation. Now, let us proceed with the outline. First and foremost, one of the main factors that differentiate Jordan and Finland in achieving SDG 6 is their existing water resources, second is the climate change, third is the population, and fourth which is the last one is technology and expertise. Now let me present for the first differences between both countries which is in terms of their existing water resources. For your information, Jordan is one of the world's most water scarce countries with as little as 100 cubic meters which is equal to 100,000 liters of water available per person every day. To put this into context, the United Nations define water scarcity as anything below 500 cubic meters that is equal to 500,000 liters per person. This statement has shown a large gap between United Nations evaluation of scarcity compared to what Jordan is facing currently. 100,000 liters compared to 500,000 liters, that is a huge gap that defines Jordan as one of the world's most water scarce countries. Other than that, around 75% of Jordan landscape is surrounded by desert and Jordan's most precious water resources lie in aquifer, uh, aquifer in a dozen in a dozen main groundwater basin, basin, basin and the aquifer 
supply supply nearly 60% of the water consumed in the country with the rest coming from the surface water supply such as the Sea of Galilee and the River Jordan. On the other hand, Finland has abundant water resources at its disposal. All surface water plants in Finland and several groundwater plants run chlorine disinfection which provide them with plenty of clean water supply. For your information, since 2017 till 2020, clean water access for people who live in Finland was 99.64% which shows that its country does not lack of clean water supply unlike in Jordan. And besides, tap water in, in Finland is graded among the highest quality water in the world and it is not only completely safe but also a pleasure to drink. And furthermore, Finland is rich in surface waters with a total of 187,888 lakes and ponds larger than 500 square meters and river totaling 25,000 kilometers in length. Almost 10% of its land area is covered by water. It shows a huge differences between Jordan and Finland in terms of the water resources. Next, the second differences between Jordan and Finland is in terms of the climate change. Climate change in Jordan include frequent heat wave, erratic rainfall, flash flood, and drought. Drought. Sorry. On August 28, 2022, a heat wave hit Jordan, which has raised its country temperature about seven degrees Celsius to eight degrees Celsius above the seasonal average. Climate change ramification including erratic rainfall and rising temperature have uh, heavily affect the water and the agri agricultural sector in Jordan. From this statement, it shows that the water supply in Jordan has been drained off even more due to the climate change which aggravating aggravating the existing water scarce problem in Jordan even further. This will also directly affect the hygiene and sanitation service in Jordan as the clean water supply is in, in, essential to be used in clean process to maintain clean and healthy life for its people. Meanwhile, in Finland, rising of temperature, frequent heat wave, increased rainfall during the winter rather than snowfall, heavy rain during the summer, as well as increased storm winds, especially in sea area and also in coastline are the impact of climate change that current Finland is facing. However, Climate change in Finland does not affect its country clean water supply generally. Still, waterborne disease outbreak do happen due to climate change, but only for those people who drink contaminated water as well as recreation, the recreational use of water body such as swimming at the beaches and lake or lake. And this was waterborne. Uh, this waterborne outbreak are fairly rare in uh, Finland, as Finland water treatment plan already take into account on the changes in the quality of raw water and potential water supply problem in their investment. Thus, this shows that climate change does not affect Finland clean water supply which directly influence its country hygiene and sanitation service, unlike in Jordan. Next, I will present the third differences between Jordan and Finland, which is in terms of their population. According to United Nations latest data in 2022, the current population of Jordan is 
ten million four hundred and forty two thousand six hundred and sixty two people. That is equivalent equivalent to zero point thirteen percent of total world population, which is half of the population in Finland, where Finland has a total of five million five hundred and sixty one thousand and sixty four people. That is equivalent to 0.07% of total world population. This statement shows a large differences between the population of both countries. Besides that, the yearly growth percentage of Jordan population is 1%. That is equivalent to 101,440 people which is more higher than the yearly growth percentage of Finland population which is only 0.15% that is equivalent to uh, 8,564 people at most. Other than that, there is a huge difference between both country population density where Jordan has high population density which is 115 people per square kilometers while Finland only have 18 people per square kilometers. All of the statement that I just mentioned shows that there is a large gap between both Jordan and Finland in terms of their population. As we know that Jordan is among the most water scarce countries in the world. It its huge population is one of the factors that show its country, uh, its uh, show its country ability to achieve SDG six and water, clean water and sanitation is still a long run compared to Finland, which has abundant, abundant of water resources as well as sufficient clean water supply and uh, and sanitation facility. Lastly, is in terms of technology and expertise. Jordan only operates 34 wastewater treatment plants that provide 40%, 14% of total water supply. And treated wastewater reuse in agriculture accounted for about 25% of total amount of water used for irrigation. On the other hand, there were around 450 wastewater treatment plants in Finland, where each serving at least 50 people. As an average, they remove organic by close to 98%, phosphorus by 96.5%, and nitrogen by 66% in order to produce clean water. In terms of waste management, um, most of the waste in Jordan end up untreated on landfill. Al Gabawi landfill is the largest final dis disposal site in Jordan and it is the only engineered uh, sanitary landfill in the country. The rest 17 final disposal sites uh, are dump site of variable condition and disposable practice. Meanwhile, the recycling rate of all municipal solid waste in Finland was 50% in 2022 uh, in 2020 sorry uh, less than 1% went to landfill or other and the rest was incinerate with energy recovery and the last part of this presentation is the conclusion to summarize Jordan still has a long way to go to achieve uh, SDG 6, which is water, clean water and sanitation. Uh, in order to achieve SDG 6, more detailed planning and further research are required to be implemented by the government of Jordan to improve its country clean water supply. Collaborating with other developed countries such as Finland who 
its uh, expert in producing clean water supply through its water treatment plan, plants and excellent in waste management within its country uh, in, in order to gain expertise in those technology and methods. Lastly, by promoting Jordan uh, uh, tourism resources to the world, it also one of the way for Jordan to gain more income for more advanced water and waste related technology. That's all for our group presentation. If you have any question you would like to ask, please feel free, feel free to put your question at the comment section below. We will answer the, those questions as soon as possible. And that's all from us. Thank you, everyone.